Today we're going to talk about a very important topic that comes up with a lot of my clients, and that's the subject of healthy boundaries. Nearly all of the coaching and consulting clients I work with struggle to maintain healthy boundaries with their own clients. And when you don't maintain healthy boundaries, it can lead to breakdowns in communication. It can lead to overgiving in that relationship, including giving more than what the client paid for. It can also lead to resentment when suddenly your work hours bleed into your personal hours, like nights and weekends. Maintaining healthy boundaries with your clients is so important for you as the business owner, and you are the one that has to both set the healthy boundaries and maintain them. So today we're going to be talking about seven important tips for maintaining healthy boundaries with your coaching and consulting clients. And if you enjoy these kinds of videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you know when my next one drops. Hi, I'm Jessica Yarbrough, top business strategist for B2B coaches and consultants who want to sell ultra high end services. And if you can imagine that when you're working with a really big ticket client, like I help my clients land, someone that maybe is paying you say multiple six figures for your time, boundaries are going to get pushed. And it's up to you as the business owner to understand what is your value system, what you want your business to look like, what you want your life to look like, and what you want your client interactions to look like so that you can create relationships that are healthy, meaningful, and in alignment with that vision. The first tip for maintaining healthy boundaries with coaching clients is to choose your clients carefully. Hopefully you understand what your values are. You understand the problems that you solve and the solutions that you provide. This means you only want to take on clients where you feel there is an alignment, both in terms of the solution you provide and values. I also recommend only taking on clients where you like their personality. You feel some sort of connection to that person. Coaching someone to optimize their business or their life is a deeply personal experience. And if someone rubs you the wrong way, or they're showing you some common red flags that may be similar to a negative client experience you had in the past, then you should not take them on as a client. I promise that if you take on a client who's not a fit, it's going to cost you more in the long run, both in terms of your mental and emotional energy. It's just not worth it. So only choose clients who you really want to work with. They should be people who are respectful, ready to invest and do the work. Next, another tip for maintaining healthy boundaries with coaching clients is to have a contract with clear deliverables. I can't tell you how many clients have come to me who literally have a multi six figure business and either don't have strong contracts that are clear or they don't use contracts at all. Remember that contracts set up expectation and avoid problems in the future. They also protect you as the business owner. So it's really important that you have a great contract. It's also very important that you spell out the deliverables in the contract so they know exactly what they're getting, the frequency they get them, how much time they get with you and more. I've had many clients complain of scope creep. This is common, especially in the consulting world where the clients will ask you for an additional item, such as an extra meeting per month with their team or an extra assessment, things that are going to take up your time. And while it's nice to be able to give clients additional things, this should not be a request coming from them where they're asking you for something that you would normally charge for. Now you can absolutely bonus clients things and clients do love this, but be careful when people are demanding more things from you that are not part of your contract and be sure to have a great contract. Next, if you want to maintain healthy boundaries with your coaching clients, have clear payment terms. Getting paid comes up a lot in my discussions with my clients. Oftentimes, especially if you're working with an organization, you may have to deal with what is their internal payment process, who you need to go through, how they pay their vendors, when they pay them, etc. It's really important that whether you're working with individuals or organizations that you set up clear payment terms, you need to determine when you get paid, how often you're going to invoice. Is it auto withdrawn from their account or are they cutting you a check and more? You also need to have protocols for what happens when a payment is missed. Are there fees such as late charges? Are you going to continue to provide services for them even though they're behind on payments? Do you pause services? You need to have clear payment terms. I promise again, if you have clear payment terms, just like the contract, you're going to avoid problems in the future, like where you're say continuing to coach a client when they haven't paid you in months. Number four, another healthy boundary for your client relationship is to set clear expectations during onboarding. Over the years, I've engaged with many different coaches and agencies, and there is a big difference between someone who has thorough onboarding and someone who is just flying by the seat of their pants. 
And when you don't have a clear onboarding process with, with those expectations, it's going to create frustration for the client. They don't know what to expect. They don't know when communication is happening, how to access things, where to go when they have a question. And this is overwhelming and frustrating for the client. Now for you as the coach, it's really important because having a great onboarding process forces you to then set up those processes for all of these things within your organization. You're going to need lots of processes. For example, how does someone reschedule a call with you? And when do you respond to client questions? The clearer you are during onboarding, the smoother your client relationship is going to be. We have a 20 plus page onboarding guide that we walk each of our clients through that reassures them every step of the way that they're going to, of how they're going to interact with me, my team, and our process for getting them results. Next, if you want to maintain healthy boundaries with your coaching clients, you need to emphasize their role in their success. They've hired you to help guide them to their goals, but it's important to remind them of their own contribution to their success. You can provide all the guidance and training and mentorship and accountability, but ultimately they have to take action to get the results they seek. Number six, if you want to maintain healthy boundaries with your coaching clients, it's very important that you respect time, both yours and theirs. Start your calls on time and end them on time. And if occasionally you don't have anything happening after a client call and you can spend a little bit more time with them, that's fine. But that's only if you have the time and want more support. Um, remember that your coaching clients are busy and so you wanna honor their time and the fact that they do have other things to do. You also want to maintain your work hours and try not to deviate from those work hours, otherwise you'll end up presenting your business. This means defining what are your work hours and communicating with clients during those work hours only. It also means defining what is your vacation time. And if you're going on vacation to set those out of office reminders and not respond to emails while you're away, it's absolutely fine to completely unplug on vacation. You should, however, give clients advance notice so they can ask questions or send in anything for review prior to that time. Again, communication is key. Finally, if you want to maintain healthy boundaries with your coaching clients, you need to set the boundaries, but also hold them and communicate when something isn't correct. For example, if you have a client who texts you every Saturday morning when you're at soccer practice with your kid and you responded a few times, even though you communicated that you don't work weekends, you are breaking that boundary. And I'm not talking about like a one-time occurrence. I'm talking about when something happens over and over again, you need to hold the boundary and simply say, you know, last week I responded, I did it because it was an urgent issue, but I don't work weekends. This is my family time. And I respond to work messages Monday through Friday during working hours. I promise that if you've done a good job of tip number one and only enrolled the right types of types of clients who are respectful, they will understand your position and follow that boundary going forward. This wraps up my video on seven important tips for maintaining healthy boundaries with coaching clients. Have you ever experienced clients who bulldozed over your boundaries? What was your role in creating that experience? And what did you learn? I would love to hear from you. Drop a comment below.